you were an English lad, grown up in Barrow. Yeah. Uh, and then you converted to Islam. Yeah. How old are you when you converted? Eight, I could have been 19. Turned, Where to were turn you at the 19. time? I, I was back in Barrow, so I went to university and then when I came back to Barrow, dropped out of uni. So there's a mosque in Barrow? No. It's, a, it's in the hospital and it's a prayer room about the size of this room. They won't let, they put mosque plans going to, to try and make them go through, but they won't. So what them. attracted you to Islam? Um, I went through a really bad breakup, like really horrific breakup. Um, I'd pretty much relationship, nervous, yeah, yeah, relationship yeah, I had breakdown, like a nervous yeah. breakdown. Yeah. Came back to Barrow. You were um, heartbroken. Absolutely wrecked, yeah. Um, got a job in a hospital in CSSD, which is giving tools and instruments to the theatres. And then I, I got talking at this surgeon once, I can't remember what, what we got talking about. Mm. It could have been giving him a pack or something, and the pack was wrong, so I'm explaining how we have to get the other instruments. And we, for some reason, we'd built up a rapport, and yeah. that grew and grew and grew, and then eventually we started talking about religion, because I think his name was Yusuf, yeah. and he saw my name, Joseph, so he was like, oh, well, that's Yusuf. I was like, yeah. that's, that's Yusuf. Yeah built up and got talking and we ended up talking and uh, he knew I was a Christian and just became befriended. You were a practicing Christian at the time? Oh, practicing. Yeah. I mean, I was raised in I was raised in a very, yeah. very religious. I went to church as a youngster. I was in the youth group, you know, but I was going through a stage in my life where I wasn't practicing my faith. I've always had a relationship with the Lord, though. I've always held on to the Lord. You know? So you found a surgeon and an attractive figure. You were interested. You found him like a good friend. Yeah, yeah something yeah, in him that yeah, you yeah. thought. We, what's we, the secret of this guy's we, strength? I think we used to um, he used to explain surgery to me, and I found mm. that quite interesting. So from that, we spent more time together, and you know. Did you think he marked you as a possible convert and they were spending time with you? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, what, what did, well, how did you actually become a convert? Did he invite you to the mosque? Or did yeah, he invite actually, you just yeah, to come no, to the prayer room and join him in prayer? prayer. He did say it was a yeah. mosque. Yeah. Come to the prayer room. Um, he explained that he was a Muslim, and from what I knew about Islam in uni, I knew a friend that was a Muslim, and I was just curious, wanted to find out a bit more about yeah. what Islam actually was. Yeah. All I knew is it was a line from Ishmael, and that's about it. I hardly knew what it was. When it got to the prayer room, then it was explained more, but it was the convert version of the convert lie was explained to me. You know? well, so the ideology, as you learn more about Islam, you were actually attracted to it? Strangely, yeah, strangely. Mm. Um, what was its strengths that attracted you? I mean, I, I went through a horrible breakup, so oh, I, yeah. I had this hatred. Well, what was the emotional comfort you got from Islam? Um, brotherhood. Mm. Brotherhood was a big yeah, one. That's important, yeah. Um, ritual. Because I, I was very lacking in in mm. finding some something to cling on to and do, something to do that made me fulfilled. My, my kind of faith in Christ was weak, so... And so you become an Orthodox Muslim, you you were praying, what, five yeah, times yeah, a day? Yeah, People uh, probably won't believe this, but I actually was. I've got all my pictures and evidence. You were washing before you ate? Yeah, yeah, we do, yeah. What were yeah. the other rituals that you had to practice? So we would, um, what, before praying? Well, no, just as being a Muslim, a daily routine. You do your Fajr prayer in the morning, um, you know, your Asr prayer, you do five prayers during the day. Um, there's lots, I mean, there's sunnah even of eating before you Are eat. Are these just prayers you learn by heart and recite? Yeah, yeah. So they're not from your heart to God? It's so, just, yeah, just but the prayers are like a ritual prayer, so before you would... Uh, Doesn't that get a bit boring, saying the same thing yeah, over and over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. at the time, you don't think that, you think mm. it's like... Well, I'm your little, I'm it was your all new, I'm wasn't it, at, the, at that hands. point? You know, you yeah. really go into it and you think it's it's this divine religion that is mm. definitely the rules and regulations that humanity needs to learn before yeah. we can be proper humans. It's, it's quite intense, you know, and especially because I've been emotionally quite broke up at the time than finding Islam. So it gave your life a lot of structure at the time? At the time, yeah, I needed mm. that structure. I needed structure, I needed five prayers, I needed that structure because I was living a chaotic life. So it was consoling in many ways. Mm, mm. Uh, but so, so how did you develop from that? Did you start, did you find a bigger mosque to go to from the prayer room? So we went down to Birmingham a few times um, and found other people and other brothers, you know, to, uh, to kind of talk to. And there was constant magazines, like little pamphlets being passed out and they would have uh, like, 
Jesus, uh, Muhammad in the Bible, and you know, uh, Jesus is not mm. God, and uh, like uh, it was like Ahmed Dirat's book, The Choice, uh, you know, like all these books. I kept collecting them, I collected all the books. So you're picking up Islamic doctrine all the time. Yeah. But what about the actual relationships with other Muslims where they invite you back to their homes? Yes, yes. you go for family meals. Yeah, it's very much like a, a process of um, building such friendship, you know, that your house is their house you stay at you know you could just stay at someone's house and they bring you breakfast in the morning there was a lot of um so it must give you a great sense of belonging yeah, there we go yeah yeah yeah, yeah belonging so um, you, you that, get a lot of you get a lot of support you get as well, a lot of structure know, in yeah, your life yeah and you were learning a new ideology mm, in a sense a new mm, religion so it must have been really interesting at that point it was it was kind everything of, was new wasn't yeah, it? everything was new and you kind of um you think you've found the answer. You think mm -hmm. you've found the answer that you've always been looking so for. So you were really enthusiastic at yeah, that point. Yeah. Now, what did they think about you as a Westerner, a former Christian in his own country, becoming a Muslim? At the time, you've got to think about the time when this was happening. It was sort of 2012, 2010. Yeah, so it was about 2012, 2010. And online, there was a lot of people that were actually converting to Islam because mm -hmm. I think the dawah must have been really being propaganded on the internet so it's a combination of meeting muslims uh, internet propaganda you know a lot of things clicking into place so as a westerner we converted to islam it was it's almost like a trophy do you know what i mean to some people um in that community as this westerner is is converted and left all their western ideologies and doctrines and started wearing a thobe a lot of big thobe you know, grew my beard out and everything like that. Uh, so you had real enthusiasm for the faith oh, at yeah, that stage. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. did your family and your previous friends think my about that? My mum was devastated. Wow. De devastated, heartbroken. She hit, she she knew probably more than I did about the religion at the time. And she would get uh, get the books and stuff that I brought back from mosque and she'd just throw them straight out. She threw all my prayer, mug, my prayer books out. She, she, she even said to me, she said, you must really hate women and you must really hate your own mother to convert to that faith. And then I'd give her this thing of, oh, well, Jannah is beneath your mother's feet and, you know, all this type of doctrine that I was learning at the time, Jenna is between beneath your mother's foot. And, you know, and Muslims love their mothers more than this and, and at least I'm not drinking, at least I'm not going out partying and, you know. Now, this was the initial phase. How long did your enthusiasm endure for? Um, I'd say three, four, four years. I mean, it's kind of there's so much happened to be honest that it's. I'd say three, four years as a. Now, how did you develop that. in that three, four years? Did you think about going on the Hajj? Hajj. Hajj. Yeah. Hajj. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You were you were acquiring a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Well, I, actually, one of the surgeons offered to pay for me to go to Hajj, mm. and I think at the time something was I couldn't didn't have a passport that was probably like working or something it was, I needed a new passport so the application of that and then they wanted me to change my name legally because yeah. you know to, to use it to change it legally mm. and then at the time I think IS was this was 2014 um, the Islamic State was just starting and all that propaganda was going so I didn't bother end up going there did was, you did you find yourself becoming hostile to Western culture and to Westerners my, yeah, my my friends um, who I've reconnected with now, at the time, and they'll vouch for anything that I'm, that I'm saying. You know, I used to walk around my hometown with a full thorb thorb on, and I probably looked like I stuck out like mm. a sore thumb. Um, but my friends just at the time didn't want to, because every time I spoke to them, all I would talk about was Islam and bring them. In fact, I think I even brought one of my friends to the mosque. You know, like trying to, and he just was like, oh, this, this. Well, were you feeling any hostility to them and to the West? I did. I probably did. Yeah, I probably started thinking. Uh, the critical approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you do. You start everything you've grown up with. You start to think it's not it doesn't have value in it. You know, all they do is party. All they do is this. But you know? were you aware of yourself as being part of a movement, which had aspirations to take over the whole country yeah, to that, expand within Britain? I think very much so. I think absolutely. But you've described it. You. You do feel a part of something and you feel that you're a beacon to others to be more religious and to practice and to share the deen. So, yeah. What about the jihad, the concept of jihad? Did that enter into your teaching? No, because I was raised as a pacifist. Mm. So it, it was real, 
No, I never had any inkling to hurt anyone. I'm just not a violent person at all. No, but she had in a sense of, of struggling to promote and further Islam. Yeah, I mean, the, you, 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 I rationalised jihad as a concept of, of that, mm. but I definitely knew there was another jihad that is sometimes allowed and sometimes yeah, even promoted. You know, yeah. well, what did you think about these passages in the Quran which advocate the killing of unbelievers? I used to kind of bring that question up about Summer 95 or you know other summers like it, kill them wherever you find them. And it was always explained this was at the time and it was needed and it's just like verses in the Bible and you know it was it was rationalized to me. And probably because I probably because I hadn't studied everything that I needed to, I accepted it for what it was. And if anyone had asked me at the time, what is that verse? I would have explained it like that. Oh, it was just for that time and Later, I've learned obviously it's different, but um, so you take the sting out of the verse, yeah, really, the so. violence out of it. Yeah. So, what caused you to become gradually disillusioned with Islam? There was a lot. There was a lot. Um, I went. I moved to Leicester, and I, I did stop practicing for a little while. But I was always associated with Muslims. So did I, it become a burden to practice all the time? A, a kind of yeah. Mm. Um, I was still. I was still disillusioned with my family at the time, you know, I was I was just going through a lot. So I went and moved to Leicester and then eventually I uh, met my wife um, and moved to Birmingham and was still practicing. You know, I had an Islamic wedding, you know, I went at the full Islamic wedding. Um, I had an English wedding as well, but I had a full Islamic wedding in full Islamic garb as well. Um, so I was still practicing. I was even getting my wife to wear hijab. She didn't wear hijab and I wanted her to wear hijab. I think I've got some pictures where I took and I'm like, mashallah, you know, she's wearing hijab. Uh, now looking back, I'm like, God, what did I do? What did I do? So you got married to a Muslim girl yeah, right. and did you start a family? Yeah, we've got one son now. Now, yeah, yeah but at yeah. the time, yeah, got one son. So Two did, months you, old. did your son get circumcised in the Islamic tradition? No, because we, we had left Islam by that mm. time. By the yeah. time my son was born, we had left Islam. Yeah. So what caused the break with Islam then? Why did you decide to leave? Very much a um, doctrine. Doctrine was a big one. Um, you started to question so, the doctrine. Yeah, yeah, you start to... Mm. When you start studying other people's perspective and point of views, you, and I, I owned all the books. This is the big thing that a lot of people don't kind of understand. I own all the books. So when people were given, you know, like say it'd be Sahih Muslim or, or Sahih Bukhari or one of the authentic tra traditions or narrations, I had the books to then look it up. And that was a big one because then I'd go and say, so it, say it was Sahih Muslim 9 and look at that book. Well, you know, it was something like where Muhammad would mock his friends or the, one of them, the satanic verses was in there. You know, there was a lot of material that I'm doing on my channel, trying to look at. So you had a critical approach to Islam. Yeah, I've had a cr critical approach. And it fell short. Yeah. You become yeah, disillusioned yeah. with it. Yeah, massively. And, uh, but obviously the Muslims have, have embraced you and they've given you yeah. a lot. Yeah. They must have been very disappointed when, when you yeah, told you know, them and that. Yeah, it still is. You know, I'm going to turn away from Islam. Yeah, it's still quite wounded. It's still, you know, my, my wife's family are very wounded by it. And it's, I think they take it personally, but it's not. It's something with the faith, not necessarily them as people. You know, that's a, well, how did they respond to you actually turning chat away like from a leper, Chat like a leper. Did they try and persuade you not to leave, or were they I'd just instantly honest, hostile? No, they were, there was a lot of hostility. Yeah. Um, and I think you know me actually speaking out about it um, is still going to bring hostility. But I never. It's not them as people. You know, it's still it's still quite a sore matter right even right now. You know, my, it's my wife's family, so. Yeah, but at first they, when they find out that you you are no longer practicing the dean, when you are no longer in the faith, they know that you've left, and they they push you as far away as possible, and it's almost like that. What's that word I'm looking for when someone pushes you away? Ostracized. Ostracized. Yeah, when yeah. when you're ostracized that much, it's for you to then go on a downward spiral, for you to then you know just just leave them alone you've you brought shame on the family so yeah it's quite quite a but quite a big powerful thing did they ever get aggressive with you no i wouldn't say aggressive mm. no i wouldn't say aggressive i mean you know i've had absolute spats with my mother-in-law but that's that was a big orchestrated moment 
probably don't want to talk about it on camera. But then, so you sort of accepted Allah as God and now you've rejected Allah as God. Yeah. How was that process? Who is Allah? How do you respond to Allah? Allah is very mystical. You've got to understand Allah mm. is very mystical. He can, he can rather forgive you or not forgive you. You don't know if you're forgiven. You, you question everything because Allah is... What is Allah to me? Allah is this um, fear in God. Mm. It's very interesting. You know, sometimes Allah, I think, is, is, is Muhammad's inner conscience. I think that's who Allah is. When I've studied the Quran and studied the Hadith, I think it's a part of Muhammad that Muhammad then told everyone else about and told everyone else to believe in and stuff. So how would you contrast the idea of Allah with the Christian notion of God? The Christian notion of God with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Look at the words of Christ. Look at, I would say to anyone, I think we both would agree to say to anyone, test the Bible. The Bible is the first thing, Bible being changed and all that. Look at that. We have a tested history of uh, Jewish sources, pagan sources, Roman sources, all these different sources about the Bible. And the one thing we do know, death, deity and resurrection. You know, the, the, the apostles died, died as martyrs for the cause, they would not reject the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. It, there's like a litmus test, there's a book, uh, Lord Liar or Lunatic, Lee Strobel, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a really good book, and he, he, he puts it as a um, as a lawyer would put it, and he tests the claim like a lawyer. I did that test with the Bible, and with the facts of history that we know, and it passed It passed the, the test, I don't know how to really put it, but with the the lovingness of, of the forgiveness of Christ and that the being born again is just absolutely so you return to the Christian faith yeah. and you you, you, re, you opened your heart up to Christ yeah yeah um, I so prayed I just I said to, I said I, you know I, I was I had guilt in my heart because I had, God is a jealous God God is a jealous God I had guilt in my heart that I had um, you know turned away from from the Lord Jesus Christ, and I just opened my heart and just opened my. Didn't pray any in Arabic. Didn't pray, you know, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or anything like that. I just prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, I am broken. I am lost. I am absolutely wretched. I'm nothing. And it just opened now, this world to me. How long is it since you've actually stepped away from Islam? Um, I'd say it's two or three years. Two or so three it's years. quite recent. recent yeah, You're a Muslim for yeah, ten years. Yeah. 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 Now, you look back on Islam now, how, how do you feel about the expansion of Islam within Britain today? Um, I am worried. I am worried about the militancy of Islam and the structure format of, of because it's so violent in its, in its verses, it can't be reformed. This, this is the one thing that I, I, I learned. Christianity, because it's a very... It's pacifistic in its sense. What Christ says, you know, Christ says, um, is very pacifistic. It can change within time and culture. It's, but with Islam, it's for you can't change Muhammad. You can't change what Muhammad said or did, or so it can't be changed. Therefore, it's got to be consistent all the way through from the seventh century. It's the same. The Sunni Islam is the same as it is now. Practicing, mm. not necessarily the people or anything like that. But practicing, it's the same prayers. Um, it's the the same rituals. It's the same concept. The same, it's the same Quran. There's there's other scholarly kind of works that say the Quran. There's twenty eight Qurans. You know that that's another argument. So just to finish, you're saying that Islam is incapable of reform and it's a threat to our nation because it wants to dominate our whole nation. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I would say that's part of it. I would say the only way that Islam could be reformed is if people actually look at Islam itself and find out what I know, what I found out, you know, mm -hmm. I've read all the books. If they find that out and then look for a uh, an answer to that and that is Christ, you know, but as far as a threat to our nation, yeah, I think I think it's an internal it's an internal threat. So when you left Islam, you'd obviously um, had problems with your wife's family. Yeah. Uh, obviously the relationship broke down. But what about the other Muslims? Was there any violence towards you at all? So, I, me and my wife had separated because of the issues that were happening. And I, I was homeless. I ended up homeless because I couldn't go back home because there was a bad relationship with my family at the time. 
So I ended up in Birmingham Homeless Services and I carted around all these books that I had either. I didn't want to let them go because I knew I would have a purpose for them in the future. And I ended up in a hostel um, in Broughton, in Broughton Road, which is Handsworth. It's the, mm. it's, it's scum. It's a, it's, yeah. it's an adult, a rough area. It's a rough, rough area. area. It's rough, yeah. it's rough. Uh, you have to, you know, really. So I ended up in this area and there were certain Muslims in at the time kind of got wind that I had been a Muslim because they would see things like like a, a, yeah. a, a Shakamese or they would see a Thor or they would see a Quran and they'd see this so they got wind that I had been a Muslim and that I wasn't practicing anymore they must have coaxed it out that yes I was a Muslim who left and um, they ended up really wanting well they did they shot me so I went out I was stabbed first Stab oh, first. that's that's dramatic, isn't yeah. it? Then stab. Well, they said you're a prostate and just yes. put the knife in. The, was this know, a threat they, to you? No, no, they were. They went in the room to nick my books. Yeah. They, they, because they they wanted the books back because I was yeah. speaking out about Islam. There was this one guy that I was speaking to. It was a nominal. He was Muslim by name, and I was helping him to see what was in the books so that he could to so witness it to him about Christ, and. Um, he must have said, oh, yeah, you know, I think Jesus might be this. The other guys that were coming to the um, to the hostel then thought, right, we're going to fucking get him. So they wanted the books back. They broke into my room. I was coming down the stairs. And I was like, oh, my God, there was like four people running in my room. One of them was running out with the books. So I went to grab the books off him and he, just, he pulled the knife out of his pocket and stuck it in my arm. You went to the police? Yeah, I went to the were police. Were they any good? No, they were rubbish. They They didn't do anything to help help me at all in fact they probably made it worse because you when you're a grass to the police you're known then as a grass so therefore you're fair game again so the the i think the worst one was um being shot which was i found out it's a two two room fire so it's like a modified gun so it's you get like different levels of bullets and yeah. that was through the leg so uh, i was coming out and then cause was this in the same hostel all the same hostel. Uh, two of them were in the so same So you'd become hostel. a target now yeah, to certain yeah, Muslims. Yeah, and it was it was just absolute. They bang on your window. Why did they shoot you then? Because I was outspoken critic of Islam. And yeah. this was to scare you, was it? Well, yeah, all that killed me. They, they shot you in the leg. Yeah, it obviously yeah, wasn't killed. Shot me yeah. through the leg, the top of the leg. Yeah, I yeah. Sure, yeah. Could you get my pants up? Uh, yeah, for shot but, through the top um, of the leg there. Obviously, that's 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 a warning to you. So, what were they trying to do? Scare you off or? I think it was a tactic to just absolutely obliterate me, rather to kill me or to fear me that much mm. that I would move, you, yeah, yeah, just move out of there, move out that so area. There was a tele- don't talk to anyone. You. Don't yeah. talk to anyone about Christ. Don't you know? Just but don't. that's a serious criminal offence to shoot somebody. Obviously, the police were interested in that. Of course they were. Of course they were. Mm. They, there was an that whole area. There was stuff going off constantly. There was a police car down all the time. But nothing actually got done. That's the mm. that's the problem. Police could be round and look like they're doing something, but then they come back and say, "Mad lack of evidence. Lack of evidence. What can you do? If there's lack of evidence. You decided." So there's no prosecution, no, no arrest. No, no, I gave them names though. I gave them mm. names of who I thought it was because people visiting the hostel, and you know, I thought I've got names like um, street names like KG Hassan. You know, like all these real street names. And I said, "I bet you it's him." And they were like, mm, yeah, we're looking at that. Never, never and they, they took any action. So what was the police, uh, what advice did they give you? Pretty much shut up. Just shut up. You, you're bringing all this on yourself. That was... So it was your problem. You yeah, were the problem. My, yeah. My, so I they was were fobbing off the I, issue. I, I they weren't actually uh, confronting what do you the expect? crime. What do you expect? If you're, mm. if you're spe- speaking out, what do you expect? Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's so what, what happened in the end? You just left the hostel then? I moved, I got moved hostels, so I eventually got moved, but they found out where I moved to, and the last attempt was when they run me over. Wow, so yeah, that, yeah. That, that is an attempt at killing. Yeah. That, so that's where you got the damage around your nose and your eye? Yeah, yeah that was, yeah. Why did you actually bang I mean, your head, did you? No, like, oh no, I was hit by the bonnet, brought my spine, brought my femur, femur hit ribs and spine and... I've got a full That's attempted chat. murder. Yeah, of course it is. Well, if you go on my YouTube channel and have a look at the. Did attempt. the police take action on that? Yes, they did. They finally took ac- action on it, but again, lack of evidence. I gave them what I gave them, and then a witness gave them what they could. But you, 
the police I, you have to I, I have to understand it as a police officer and I've done a subject access request so that's all the information the police have on their computers about all of these incidents I did a subject access request and got all the information and I read about what the police were saying and this the fact that they <clears throat> can't protect me all the time they can't send police officers around they can send police officers around and say how are you doing are you okay but they can't protect you from a yeah. threat like that yeah. because there's there's because there's that many different people if one gets caught it'll just send someone else did you get it. an osborne warning that your life was in danger yeah, I've had you had to move you had to move out from where you live yeah now you think this ferocious hostility towards you this extreme violence was because you have been a muslim yeah. and then turned away yeah. from the faith yeah. That was the reason yeah, for it. Yeah. I'm being an, an outspoken, saying these are the and reasons why. And then being critical. Why, yeah, these Islam. are the reasons why I've, I've turned away. So I, I guess on that basis, your advice to people is don't embrace the Islamic faith yeah. as a good old well, term. Yeah, I, um, I always say in my videos, don't convert to Islam. Mm. Don't convert to Islam. Because it could be horrendous, the consequences. Yeah. My wife actually left. Mm. Yeah. My wife left the, uh, the faith and came, came, came to know the Lord. So there is... Mm. You know, I would say don't convert to Islam in the first place, but I would always say that the Lord Jesus always can use something like that, you know, to tell a story like this so that mm. people, other people don't make the same mistakes mm. and don't do that, you know. Um, yeah, God's glory. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll just ask you then. So y you left the, the faith, the Muslim faith. What about your wife? How, how did she, what did she, did she follow you in leaving the faith? She did, she did. Yeah, there's, the evidence. That was a dramatic is, step for her. The, yeah, it's massive. The evidence is unrefutable. You can't when you see the evidence laid out in front of you in the hadith. What can you do? It's there. Right. That's what it says. So then you make a choice: Do I keep in the faith, knowing everything that I know, or do I make the bold step and leave? And when you make the bold step and leave, and actually look at Christ and and pray and open your heart to Christ, I remember me and my wife just sitting and praying, and it was. Yeah, I'll get emotional. It's it's mm. mad. It's just mad where God can do that. You know what I mean? It's mm. it's takes you on this um, on this journey, and now we've got a two month old son. Well, uh, thank God you're free now. Yeah. Do you yeah, but it's um, you know it's been a, yeah. Yeah. Thanks.